What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and on this planet we send it and what we're going to be getting today Well, we're going to be getting into the very first garden vlog of fall 2022 And it's my first vlog in quite a while after getting back from recovery And I have taken some damage if you haven't seen my other two short videos I talked about my recovery update and the plan for the channel um, You know, I'll go ahead you can go ahead and watch those if you go over to my videos, but the plan for this video is I just kind of want you guys get caught up with a little bit more detail I did in those videos and show you some of the devastation, unfortunately, that has taken um, place in the garden since there really hasn't been any caretakers, unfortunately, for like the last two months. But all right, I got a plan in place. Let's go ahead and send it. So just quick to note, I will just say that I will be clean, getting all my garden cleaned up in here very soon. Um, first, we're going to talk about some of the damage that has taken place uh, since we've been away. This blueberry bush almost completely died, and to be honest, I think it may have died. I don't know. But I have recently uh, put in some new um, specific uh, acidic mulch and uh, not mulch uh soil and even some fertilizer acidic fertilizer into here to hopefully revive these so i'm kind of just waiting to see how they go um and, and i think that uh i think these are deciduous so i am expecting these potentially to lose their leaves so i'm praying that's what i'm seeing over here but we'll see and unfortunately we on my last uh potato video i talked about you know getting some new potatoes planted i did not get those planted unfortunately so and, and i think it's just a little too late now that we reach fall to try to push the limits the other damage that we took unfortunately and i don't think my wife was kind of still feeding the worms but i think they kind of drowned out a little bit so i'm kind of in here to see uh and, and well they drowned out and i'm pretty sure we lost every single worm in here unfortunately because um, i wasn't here to give them a dry area so what you're seeing here on top is i put a whole layer of cardboard and then i got a new bag of worms so i'm trying to dial in here and see if I can see any worms bouncing back you know which I'm not seeing yet at least um, put a whole bag in here so I'm pretty confident they wouldn't have perished quite yet I think they're just down uh, eating somewhere else this is kind of the drier area um, so yeah, the first indication, unfortunately, is when I came out here, number one, I didn't see any worms. And number two, it had a foul odor. It, it appeared it went anaerobic. Um, so, uh, and, and to be honest, I'm a little concerned because I'm not seeing the worms yet. But a whole new bag of just 200 worms has a lot of place that they can go in here. So, I guess we'll just have to check in on the next update to see if we can see them. Um, but one thing that I'm going to do now to try to prevent this from getting soaked out is I'm getting some rain gutters installed um, to redirect the redirect the water because it actually comes down right on top of this. And I think that's pro potentially what drowned it out. So if you're getting one of these hungry bins, definitely make sure that it's not completely open to, you know, rain or else that could happen. And the other hit that we took is I lost almost all of my strawberries. You can tell where I'm where I, I began watering them again, and you got some of them coming back pretty strong. But unfortunately, we did take a big hit. Uh, if you recall, all of these were filled with just you know green vegetation, uh, strawberries, uh, free, you know in the masses coming out when it was fruiting. But now I've uh, taken a pretty big hit, and I'm going to have to grow back and bounce back here. So now we're getting to the area that was, you know, pretty much self-maintained due to this is that we're getting to the area that was being watered. And at, we were already expecting uh, the celery bushes to sort of fall over and self-seed. So that's actually what I'm still letting it do. And I'm seeing what appears to be the fall arugula coming up from, you know, self-seeding. And that's, that's actually a good thing to see. So I'm glad to see that that's some, you know, life bouncing back on its own. So, you know, just maybe a plug for if you plan to do potted plants and things like that um if it's not fully automatic and something happens to your family like it did with me you might you know have similar issues that you just saw but on everything else that is you know sort of on its own self-maintenance you know enabled environment then it will keep going even while you're unable to want to give you guys a quick 
heads up on the bees here. The bees look like they've been doing it. We had a little bit of rain. It looks like even though they're open, they were able to survive it. We didn't get that much rain, so maybe that helped them out. But I definitely want to kind of get them into uh, their own hive that I can, you know, harvest the honey that they're producing. So once I get better up and up, I'm probably going to buy me a hive um, just because I don't have that much time and since I need to bounce back from everything. Or maybe we'll make a hive. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But when I get my hive, I'm going to probably pay someone local to come over here and help me transfer these bees to the new hive. And it looks like the hops um, probably here very soon. I feel like I, I should be able to get out here and um, be able to start trimming up the hops. They're already starting to go brown, so if I'm not out here in a week, I may even lose this year's harvest again. But if anything, um, you can see how it's literally going all up. It's even merging over here. It's going all over the place. So the hops have done pretty good. So even if I'm not able to get at it again um, uh, until next year, I'm confident they'll come back just like they did, as we see here, and I'll be able to capitalize next year. Year. And then also just a quick tidbit, I got this papaya tree coming in that I let it go too long and uh, I need to cut it down unfortunately because that is not where I want a papaya tree. And we'll just take a short walk down here. Most of this vertical garden where the strawberries, correction, where the tomatoes were, were all dead. I do got some uh, sweet green peppers and some hot peppers down here um, finishing up their growth. So uh, we've been using that for a variety of things as far as the hot peppers. And uh, it's time for me now that it's fall to go ahead and get some of the um, fall plants and get them planted so we can be harvesting here in a couple of months. All right, we'll group this section here all together. I think uh, at the end of my last uh, full vlog, I was talking about how like the plums were coming in and the peaches were, you know, starting to come in. Well, I think immediately after that video, every single morning I would come out and I would look at the ground and the plums would just start falling to the ground and they were completely ripened. I think we, we may, we, we maybe only, lost 10%, meaning we probably were able to eat 90% of the production. It was only about, you know, maybe 15, 20 of them or so, but we definitely lost very minimal on the plums this year because since I was coming out every morning, I was able to get to them on the ground before the animals did. Now the oranges, actually just take a dip in here real fast. Let's take a look at the oranges. The oranges, I mean, they're still growing. This is this looks like it's coming in pretty strong. As a matter of fact, we got bark forming down there. That's a great sign. This uh, particular variant of semi dwarf tree is coming in and somewhat filling in leaves, at least at the top. So that's pretty cool. Um, looks like that's coming along. You can kind of see the goji berries just plopping up just about everywhere around. I actually need to grab those. It looks like they're starting to harvest. But I also noticed over here, the goji berry shoots are really starting to spread. So we're starting to get them in other parts of the garden. And I actually think that that's pretty cool. Now we'll just take a quick step back. The peaches, as you can see, I went ahead and put some netting on here and I was able to, we were able to save and eat a majority of the peaches. So a lot of you had given me those recommendations on putting that up. I had actually had the nets already. I finally just did it and it definitely helped. So once, uh, once the leaves fall to the ground and go and the tree goes dormant, I'll go ahead and take the net off. Um, probably around the time it's time to prune them down anyways. And the Mexican lime tree. Oh, and the persimmon tree, too. The persimmon tree looks like it's still filling in, doing pretty good. Mexican lime tree. Oh, what's this? Looks like we got a couple limes here. One, two. You know when they fall to the ground, as long as they're not damaged by the... Sorry about that. As long as they're not damaged by the animals, which these appear to be good. Let me show them to you. Um, these are perfectly ripe and ready to eat, so um, these are good to go. Uh, the only thing to note about the Mexican lime tree is I definitely have some pruning to come in. When you got all these coming in like this, you know, that's too many in one place. It's crowding. Um, and then plus, I need to cut and, you know, take care of some of these suckers here, too, that are starting to come up. Because uh, as you know, well, we try to stay sucker-free in the garden. Now the fig tree, unfortunately the fig beetle got to most of this than we did this year. We did get a few of them, um, but the fig tree got quite a bit of them. As you can see, here's one that they sort of devastated right up under here. Um, if that's even focusing for you guys, it's hard for me to see. But uh, yeah, we didn't get too many of figs um, this year, but we, we got a fair amount. Figs isn't necessarily one of the things that we eat a lot, but we do eat them while they're in season at least. 
And I can definitely tell that we're getting into fall here because the lighting of the sun sort of in midday doesn't support these garden vlogs very well. But let's get in here on the avocado tree. Now it looks like things are not going good. You got all these browning at the leaves. And, and, and I've heard that's probably due to like over salting or something like that bad soil. And it might be. But I've noticed that that normally happens when uh, you got new growth coming in. So we're getting a lot of new growth. And the new growth is pretty exciting because while we have that new growth coming in, in. we still got these two avocados right here we got one right here and we got two right here so the first year we got the first year of this avocado production we're getting two um, so that's pretty cool. So here in November, maybe the end of November, early December, I'm going to go ahead and harvest those. Um, and uh, I could keep them on there to grow bigger, but I want to take them off at somewhat of a reasonable time so that it can the, the tree itself can start diverting a lot of the nutrition into this new growth that's coming in, future new growth in preparation for spring. So hopefully next year we get somewhere, definitely more than two, but somewhere around 10 or less than 10 uh, avocados. And Big Bertha is in effect. She is growing. You can see how full this looks right here. And it's kind of leaning over. We got the production over here just filled in um, fiercely. And here, I just want to kind of come around. I mean, we got we got guavas coming in and falling down. As a matter of fact, let me show you this one that we didn't get to in time. But I can see quite a few over here. Guava, look at this branch right here. It is super heavily weighted. And that almost looks like it's about to self uh, prune itself. So I'm going to have to go over there and take a look at it and maybe stilt it up. But let's take a little step back here and give you just an idea of the majesty of the Big Bertha. Now the pomegranate tree. So the pomegranate tree, you can see, it looks like it was worked. It's bending over here, it's bending up there. Even these right here are bending over. And then let's come around here, you can see these are bending over. We probably, ha I had a good harvest of pomegranates. Well, it would have been good. Unfortunately, we didn't get to it in time. A lot of them cracked. Uh, and I think we lost about half of them, um, or, or, or maybe almost half of them, um, because we didn't uh, prune them, uh, correction, harvest them in time. However, we got about two five gallon buckets full of them. And and that's pretty good. And as a matter of fact, you can see one up there I wasn't able to reach, but I need to either somehow whack that down or whatever. But uh, come time for pruning, I'm definitely going to have to address the deformity of the of the tree itself to hopefully get everything kind of growing up, you know, upright. So it's able to support itself for next season, which I anticipate will even be a larger harvest. And this is definitely a good news story right here. The baby avocado tree. You remember the last vlog, I was concerned about its well-being, but this thing is bouncing back. The leaves look good, and I'm seeing additional growth coming up there at the top. So this baby avocado tree is coming back. So it looked like I was about to lose it, but it's surviving, and it's, it looks like it's starting to thrive. So that's great to see. Let's come on over here and take a look at the papaya tree. Definitely got some areas I need to clean up and dress, but the papaya tree right papaya tree right now is looking healthy. I mean, it does have a little sickness here, but that's not on all the leaves. Let me pull this one down a little bit. These leaves are looking great and healthy. And to be honest, I'm glad to see it because <laughs> we're going into winter and it doesn't like the cold weather. So this thing probably has another month or two um, to let these papayas ripen um, before I think it goes back into that sort of sick stage due to the due to the colder temperatures. Now let's take a look at the navel orange tree. It's been a little bit since I've looked at this. I mean all the leaves look good so that's good and actually nope that's not new growth. Um, I do. I am seeing maybe the beginning of some new growth coming in in a couple of places. Not very strong, but it's still it is coming in. So hopefully this year it'll be strong enough to go ahead and hold on to the flowers, let them turn into fruit, and we'll be able to try some oranges from this tree for the very first time. Oh, and it does look like I got some suckers down there to take off too. The little engine that could. We did not receive any mangoes this year. As a matter of fact, what I thought was flowering didn't end up being flowering. The, we, we are still kind of getting some coning and like, you know, it looks, looks like growth is coming in, but none of them really took off except for this one. And as a matter of fact, we had actually had a casualty. The main trunk sort of uh, was snapped. I, I don't know why, maybe a bird or something. This one might be the closest to this one, 
and then this one might be the two closest to actually sort of sprouting again but i don't know this one looks like it's you know sort of ready and then this one over here i thought that was going to be where the flowering came but it never did so i'm not sure what happened however um, it does look like it's forming pretty good, uh, I mean strengthening pretty good at the base. And I think that the drip irrigation that we put in for focused uh, watering along the tree line is really helping out all the trees. All right, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, just wanted to do a quick, short, and sweet vlog, show you where things have been, what's been going on, and try to update you the best I can since I've been down, you know, for the last two months or so, and including my mother-in-law. You know, God bless her. But uh, I will also mention I did we did lose quite a few vines of uh, grapes on the vine, little shriveled on the vine. I'm looking at them right now. So those will be coming down after I prune them off. Hell, I say I don't think it was a complete loss because the bees were you know drinking from them. So at least when I was inside, I was seeing the bees over there drinking from them. So at least they didn't go to complete waste and hopefully help the bees you know survive some of the conditions that they are endured. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.